We play and call it work. Hey folks, Janine from Mini Wargaming here with another how-to video for you. In this video, we are going to paint an accent armor piece on the Severain model. We want to paint this armored arm in a nice rich bone color. As always, if you have suggestions for something you'd like to see in a future how-to video, please leave them down below in the comments. All right, we want this bone to be nice and bright. It's going to be a nice accent piece to all of my darker colors. But since I am painting this over black, I need to start with something that gives me a little bit of a base to work off of. So I am going to use the color Deathclaw Brown. I'm going to thin it before I apply it using a little bit of Lamian Medium, but you can thin down your paints with whatever medium works for you, including water. And I'm applying this all over all of the armored area. I want to make sure that I apply this in lots of thin coats. It's going to look a little bit messy as it initially applies, but as we continue to layer it on slowly and in a controlled way, we're going to get a really nice opaque paint. Earlier, I painted the fingers of this armored glove as if they were skin, just because I like the way it looked, even though they are technically sculpted as armored fingers. And I'm using the color Deathclaw Brown just because I really like the nice, rich, warm undertones the brown has. And also because it's a really nice pigmented color that doesn't require a lot of buildup and it's going to give me a nice base for a really nice, warm bone color later. Once the Deathclaw Brown has dried, we are going to start lightening this up until it's a really nice bone color. Our first highlight color is going to be Carrick Stone. Again, this is a thin down paint and I want to make sure that I thin all of my paints. And I'm applying this over most of the armor. I'm basically just using my Deathclaw Brown as an area that makes it easier for me to apply these lighter colors without having to layer them so much. But there are a few areas where I want to leave a little hint of this in the darkest shadow, particularly in the areas where the different plates layer on top of each other. I kind of want to leave a really exaggerated shadow there so that each of the separate areas of armor really stands out from each other. But this is another color that I'm going to paint over most of the armor. I want to layer this up in several different thin layers until I build up a really nice opaque paint rather than applying this too thick all at once. My next color is Ushapti Bone. This color is going to brighten my bone. It's going to turn the color a lot more bone than kind of a, a dusty gray like the Carrick Stone is. And with this color I also want to start really exaggerating the areas on this armor that I want to seem brighter. So I'm going to begin to paint this in the areas that would be hit by the sun and also do a really thick edge highlight as well. I really want all of the edges of this armor to be exaggerated and picked out quite nicely so that the sharp angles on the armor plates are really distinct. But this color really is doing the heavy lifting of my bone colors. So I'm going to apply this quite heavily. It's really going over probably about 80% of the Carrick Stone. It's covering up most of the areas. I just want to leave a little bit of darkness in a few sections that are in shadow. So again, the areas where the plates transition from each other. And then also some of the dips, like for example, where the wrist kind of is angled in. I want to leave that area a little bit darker and exaggerate the areas where it flares out at the top and the bottom and leave a little bit of darkness on the area that encases the soul stone. My next color is going to be Screaming Skull. Since that Ushapti bone is making everything look nice and bright and bone-like, I am using this Screaming Skull color just to really exaggerate the highlight. So I am painting this just as a thick edge highlight, outlining all of the sharp edges. Again, I want that sharpness to be exaggerated. So I'm just taking a thin detail brush and really catching all of the edges. The next thing I want to do is work on the shadows a little bit. So I'm going to take a little bit of Nuln Oil. 
I'm using this color mostly because I like the way that it's going to tint the brown shadows that I've used earlier. And I don't want to use a lot of this because this is a very dark shade I'm going on top of a light color. So if I use too much, it's going to overpower everything. But I'm just going to do a thin outline on all of this decoration around the soul stone. And then just in the very darkest parts where the armor plates are transitioning into each other just to really exaggerate those areas. And the last thing I wanna do is take Ceramic White, and I'm using this as a final super highlight to really exaggerate everything on the edge. I'm using this color to draw attention in a few places. First, to the areas that would be in the most light, but also all the areas that have particularly sharp angles. I want to apply a little bit of this paint there because adding a final pop of brightness there is going to make everything look really sharp and I want to exaggerate that sharpness. All right, I went ahead and painted the metal and the soul stone and with that the armor on this arm is complete. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more how-to videos, I have another one where I'm going to paint the leather belt that's draped with all these soul stones on the skirt in the mini wargaming vault in the link down below in the description. If you don't already have a vault membership, you can go ahead and click the link, sign up for a seven day free trial and get access to my video as well as hundreds of other videos in the mini wargaming vault. So go ahead, click the link, start your free trial and happy wargaming.